I guess I can't go this way. Okay. And hey everyone, it is Sunday, May 7th. The time is 4.01 p.m. and I'm here at Rosedale Station and the temperature is around 12 degrees Celsius. And it is raining at the moment. While I was on the platform waiting for a train to roll in so I could get that cinematic opening to this video, I heard that sound. I was wondering what the heck was going on. Looks like it's some kind of impromptu video shoot. Or maybe it was planned, I don't know, but either way. And this is Crescent Road. That was my brand new dollar store umbrella I just opened. I couldn't find mine. It sent me back a whopping $4.80, I think. It's got that funky car pattern. pattern. Ramson Park across the street and for this one I'm gonna head on up to Davenport Road and then I'll walk northwest up until where Davenport meets DuPont and then I'll go west along DuPont over to DuPont Station so we'll be going from Rosedale Station in the rain to DuPont Station Along the way, we'll be passing what I think is easily one of the ugliest buildings of all time, not just in the city of Toronto. So this here is Young Street, and I'm currently walking south. This is just north of downtown. This is also entering the northern end of the Yorkville neighborhood. And this one will be taking us through Yorkville. And then later on the Annex. And this is Ulmer Avenue, which turns into Rosedale Valley Road. Just off to the east there, and it's quite the scenic drive actually. Davenport's just a few blocks to the north of here. And yesterday we had one of the nicest days of the year by far. It was 18 degrees. We had nice blue skies. I didn't really take advantage of that. I only got out and did a live stream.
And of course, my procrastination didn't pay off. And I think tonight at 6.30, the Maple Leafs are playing game three of their series versus the Panthers. I know a lot of people are planning their nights around that. And at last check, the Jays were up 4 nothing over the Pirates. There's your useless sports update. I'll be making a right onto Davenport at the next major intersection. Let's see if this cyclist avoids this puddle. Canadian Tire on the left. And that store has been extensively remodeled in recent years. And at one point they went to like a almost full self checkout area and now they're back to manned cashiers. And there's a Service Ontario in there so if you need to renew your license or health card in person that's where you'd go do it. I did it during the pandemic. My cards were expiring and they told me, oh, it's actually extended indefinitely. And I didn't have to go there, but I was there anyways, so I did it. There's the Masonic Temple, also known as the Concert Hall, although it hasn't seen much use as an event venue in recent years as it has in the past. I think it was first opened in either 1908 or 1912. I have those two dates stuck in my mind. But, but most importantly, it was where I saw my first ever concert back in April of 96. I saw the Foo Fighters, and then a month later, I saw the Gin Blossoms there. It's my first concert, my first mosh pit. And this is where Davenport Road starts, as on that side of Young, it is Church Street, and that's where the church begins. And you'll notice there are bike lanes. They've actually been on Davenport since 1994. Although they're only protected in a few stretches. For the most part, it's just a painted gutter. I think I should have mentioned uh, Masonic Temple on Sundays is leased out to like a mega church group. And also spent some time as a TV studio for MTV Canada. That was pretty short-lived. And CTV News was based out of there for a while, or at least it was one of their offices, as well as the very short-lived Mike Bullard Show. Well, the major network edition of it. And there is the stone church, and that has been there for as long as I can remember. It's kind of a shame that modern churches 
I've done away with all the glorious architecture of years past. Although I guess you could say the same for pretty much everything else. So I am heading northwest. But once it gets north of DuPont, it'll veer to the west and it'll be an east-west route that runs parallel to DuPont. And it'll go all the way to Old Weston Road. And this is the north end of Bay Street. So you could take that all the way through downtown and through the heart of the financial district down to the lake. We have a high-end car dealership there, a Maserati. There's an Alfa Romeo. Another Alpha. I'm sure that stack of tires there is probably north of 20 grand. So I mentioned we'd be going by one of the ugliest buildings of all time. And here we are. Behold the terribleness, terriblelessness, the awfulness. That is 110 Davenport. Pardon my French, but what the hell were they thinking? Some random geometric shapes. With a very poorly executed clock tower. It looks like. It took inspiration from Mississauga's absolutely dreadful city hall. And its color scheme does it no favors. That may be able to be blocked soon by a much better building across the street. I just think that's the epitome of ugly. Let me know get your thoughts down in the comments. I think there's an uglier building in Toronto on the southwest corner of Dundas and Bloor. It's the Sullivan Grant building. I don't know, if you're Toronto Fire and this thing is ablaze and everyone's been evacuated, I say just let it go. There's no way the owners of that building are going to their insurance company and saying, <laughs> rebuild it the way it is. There's the College of Nurses of Ontario across the street. So this is the north end of Yorkville, a pretty swanky neighborhood. There is the 19 bus. I think it's just one of two buses you'll ever see on Davenport. And this one just covers a short stretch. I think between DuPont and Bay. And then there's another bus that runs along the western portion. is the Belmont Parquette, so I could turn right on these streets and find my way down to Ramsden Park, which was right across the street from where I started this at Rosedale Station. Some very pricey real estate that way. There's an old EMS station across the street. The camera lens seems to be holding up in the rain. 
So this slightly embarrassing car themed umbrella is doing its job, I guess. It's really slowed down right now actually it's just coming out a slow trickle i might be tempted to put this umbrella away in a moment let's look back towards the heart of yorkville and we're just a few blocks north of downtown right here Since I got back from my trip, I haven't really been venturing far out of Midtown or Downtown. So that is on the to-do list in the coming weeks. I may be venturing very far <laughs> out of the city by the end of the week. Stay tuned to the channel to find out. It may or may not involve a hotel that might already be booked. A fine art gallery. Generally, these retailers cater to a higher end crowd. Discarded makeup display. street there will take you down into the heart of Yorkville Village. Hello Dynamics Cannabis. Sotheby's Canada. Sports cards, art, NFTs. They've got the J game. And I can't see the score, but I know Toronto has what looks like four. I can't see what Pittsburgh has. And welcome to Avenue Road, which just south of here at Blue Street will turn into Queens Park. And south of College, it turns into University Avenue. Here it runs north all the way just past North America's busiest freeway, the 401. And sadly, there's a ghost bike, which means a cyclist lost their life right around that spot. There are far too many of those in the city. A 
Well, look south, so on the left is Yorkville, and on the right is the Annex neighborhood. The Avenue Diner since 1944. I've never been there. Half a grapefruit, $5.95. The Avenue Club sliced chicken, bacon, and tomato, $16.95. Grilled cheese, $9.95. Grilled cheese and bacon, $10.95. Female bacon, $12.95. I was kind of craving going to the Carousel Bakery at the St. Lawrence Market and having one of their famous female bacon sandwiches soon. It's a high-end furniture retailer. I think the rain has sufficiently let up. Joseph Tuff Park. That's kind of odd. Uh, they squeeze that little row of townhomes. They're probably condo townhomes or rentals, actually. Right at the end there. I'm guessing they were part of this development, which actually I think is quite nice. I like those big loft spaces. They seem to be in the same style as that building, not the rental here. You'll notice Davenport is kind of a hodgepodge of different developments. It's definitely one of the more random of the major streets. It even has a blind to go, complete with a parking lot in front of it. I do not like developments that meet the street like this. I don't think residential should be facing the sidewalk on a major street. I actually really love that building. I just hate the fact that front of it is like a loading bay. Could they not have hid that off on the side and stuck a retailer in there? But still, those look like some absolutely gorgeous units. With really nice balconies. And it looks like something will be going in next door here. The Bedford Presentation Gallery. That's a bit better executed. Still a bit cookie cutter for my liking, but at least it's retail. It'll breathe some life into the neighborhood when places move in. All right, so here's where the 19 bus turns on to Davenport at Bedford Road. Ooh, we've got a CN Tower sighting. So the Mesetta here, you'll find St. George Subway Station. <laughs> that girl just kind of looked at me and rolled my eyes. I think that guy was just trying to talk to anyone who passed by. There's a new development going in. So I'm heading more north right now. And just up ahead is the intersection of DuPont and Davenport, so I'll be turning left onto DuPont. But Davenport goes up 
and then that goes left. And it runs along the shoreline of an old ancient glacial lake, Lake Iroquois. And in the 1800s, Davenport was a main route to get across the city. And there was even a toll at Bathurst and Davenport. And there's still a toll keeper's museum there. But there seems to be a lot of these medium density condos going up. I don't think this area will ever really shake that sort of hodgepodge feel you get. Just being a random collection of stuff. There's a car wash across the street. So you could turn left here, you could go straight, you could ride a bicycle, or you could turn right. You think the bike might have arrows pointing which direction you can go at this intersection. Here we go, DuPont Street, which starts to the right over at Avenue Road, which we walked past earlier. And it runs east-west all the way over to Dundas Street West. So it catches another east-west street, making a north-south jog. And then just west of Dundas, it becomes Annette Street. And this too, like Davenport, is kind of a random hodgepodge different buildings and it doesn't really have a collective character to it although it does run parallel to the CP rail tracks there so it's got definitely an industrial and warehouse kind of history to it and it's gradually been gentrifying Uh, this is west along the south side of DuPont. And here's St. George Street. So earlier on Bedford Road, I mentioned you could turn south there and head down to St. George Station. And you could do the same here. And head down to the western end of it. There's the somewhat infrequent 26 DuPont. One thing is I am definitely overdressed. I'm wearing a long sleeve t-shirt, a hoodie, and a light coat. This is a bit of a dumb move. This is Huron Street. Although Huron Street actually continues just to the north of the rail corridor. For a little disconnected portion. But it'll run south all the way down to just short of Queen Street. It's one of those one-way streets that changes directions a number of times. 
And just over there, you can kind of see the tip of Casaloma. I just saw a sightseeing tour bus at southbound Spadina Road that made me wonder why would it be there? And then I quickly put two and two together. I think they'd offer a discount to sit in the upper deck on a rainy day like this. I think I paid about $5 to ride in the double deck tour bus in Hanoi. And here I think it's about 70 bucks. And again, I paid about $3 for a delicious beef noodle soup there. And last night, I paid about 19 at a place called Ginger, which used to be really cheap. I had a large one and a pop, but still, that was a bit of a sticker shock. I remember it being under 10 bucks at that place not too long ago. Well, welcome to 2023, I guess. to DuPont Station here at Spadina Road and DuPont. So this will be the end of the line. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. So rather than head down into the station, I'm going to think if I just want to go home or if I want to record another one. Maybe I want to go to Subway. Don't know. But either way, here I am. So I hope you enjoyed this one, walking along Davenport from Rosedale Station up to DuPont and then over to here at DuPont and Spadina. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. And if you wish to support what I do on YouTube, there's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership down in the description. And there is a super thanks button appearing below the video as well. Don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe and all that jazz. And stay tuned to see what I'm up to, if I get up to it <laughs> later this week. It might involve an airplane as well. Anywho, thanks for watching and I will catch you on the next one. Yoink.